Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Welcome to the channel. Today it's all about 5 liter Ford cam testing. In this video, we have a very cool 5 liter Ford camshaft comparison for you guys. We're going to take a look at the factory Ford 5 liter camshaft. We're then going to compare that to a very famous and very popular Ford racing cam, the E303. You know, the emissions legal cam. Then we're going to find out how much 25 years of camshaft technology has improved the breed by testing the E303 against the E303 Plus from Summit Racing. Okay guys, let's jump right in on the comparison between the E303 from Ford Racing and the newer, more modern version, the E303 Plus from the guys over at Summit Racing. But before we get into that shootout, obviously we have to start out with the stock cam to see how much power each one of those cams gain over stock, because really that's probably what most guys are interested in, and then they want to figure out which one of those obviously is the better choice when they do go to upgrade a cam. So we'll start off with our test motor and then run it for with our stock camshaft. So this is run with the factory 5 liter 5 speed stick cam, but our combination was not a stock 5 liter motor. Now it's important to note that the, the change in power that you get from a camshaft upgrade is going to be direct in direct proportion to whatever kind of motor you test it on. If you test it on a stock motor, other things are going to be limiting the power potential of the camshaft, the stock heads, the stock 5 liter HO intake manifold, whatever other combinations are on there that can limit how much power you get from the camshaft. So the cam has more to give, but only if you have the other things associated with it. So I want to put together a combination that would obviously showcase what these cams were capable of. And so what we did was we ran a basically rebuilt Marshall engines, your typical kind of auto parts store rebuilt 302. It had uh, the HO block, and a factory cast crank and rods and pistons in it. We top that though with a set of blueprint aluminum as cast 190 cc you know aluminum performance heads but adds cast versions they had a 202 16 valve and a 60 cc chamber and as I mentioned 190 cc um, intake ports. We ran this with in carbureted form. Uh, it made the testing a little bit faster. Later on, I will be testing a lot of these different camshafts in fuel injected form so we can see what the difference is there. We can compare carburetion versus fuel injection and also take a look at what the cams do when they're fuel injected. We'll probably run something like a GT40 style intake manifold, that kind of deal. But this was run with an Edelbrock Performer RPM intake, not the air gap, just the regular dual plane Performer intake with a divider that comes all the way up to the carburetor. We installed a 750 hull. Uh, carburetor and this carburetor was equipped with the Percy's adjusted jets it, it didn't really change the power potential of the carburetor all it did was make adjustment jet adjustments external so all we basically had to do is turn a little flathead screw and then we could adjust the air fuel provided by both sides of the carburetor both the the primary and secondary sides of the carburetor made made dialing the air fuel curve very quick and easy so that we didn't have to remove the bolts it's a nice little treat uh, makes testing a lot easier and quicker we ran an MSD distributor and we varied the timing until we got maximum power basically all the testing was run on 91 octane pump gas we also ran a set of inch and three quarter long tube headers with three and a half inch collector extensions these wouldn't be ideal and wouldn't be what you probably would run uh, on the street and in a vehicle but um, unfortunately we had burned out our inch and five eight headers that we had run for years and years and years uh, that we got from the guys at hooker and those were our fox chassis headers but we just ran them so much that it just that the um, tubes deteriorated so we had to throw those away so we ran these inch and three quarter headers and I put collector extensions on top of the collector extensions and you're going to be seeing a video on that coming up so it's just kind of an interesting test for the for the uh, the header combination but we run first with the stock 5 liter HO camshaft and our aluminum headed 302 produced 368 horsepower and 364 foot pounds of torque. You can see it had good, you know, good torque above 350, uh, 350 foot pounds. And the power peak was kind of leveled off. But I was impressed by the fact that this thing made 368 horsepower with a stock camshaft. And you can see we started all the way down here at 2400 RPM. But here's what happened first when we installed the Ford Racing E303 camshaft. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for the camshaft, a 498 lift. 
220 degrees of duration and 113 or no 110 degree load separation angle so we'll go ahead and put the specs up there and you can see that the the E303 cam obviously was better than the factory camshaft. And not only that, it picked up power almost everywhere from down at 2,500 all the way up. The peak power with the E303 was up to 399.9. So we're going to call that, we're going to round that up one tenth of a horsepower um, up to 400 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 376 foot pounds. So all in all, this did exactly what we expected. The E303 was an emissions legal cam and uh, is a mild camshaft, but does pretty well. We picked up about 30 horsepower here, which is a good gain uh, from a simple cam swap. But now let's find out if the Summit version of this camshaft is any better. We've taken a look at the comparison between the stock 5 liter Ford cam and then upgrading to the Ford Racing E303 cam. It did kind of what we expected. So this was our stock cam and here is our Ford Racing E303 cam. And we saw about, it was totally uh, from peak, measure peak to peak, it was 32 horsepower difference between the two. And that's kind of exactly what we expected. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the Summit cam. So can the Summit E303 Plus cam actually show a better in power improvement from the E303? And the first thing we need to look at is obviously there's a difference in cam specs between the E303 and the, the new E303 Plus from Summit Racing. The 8900 is their part number. And the biggest difference we see is... The E303, the original camshaft, was a single pattern cam, so it had the same lift intake and exhaust. It had the same duration intake and exhaust. On the Summit cam, they have a camshaft that is a dual pattern cam. So instead of being a 498 lift, both intake and exhaust, the Summit cam is a 540 or 550 540 lift split, so 550 on the intake and 540 on the exhaust, so slightly less on the exhaust, which I thought was kind of interesting. Also, in the duration, rather than being 220 on the intake and 220 on the exhaust of the original E303, the, the new Summit E303 Plus is a dual pattern 220 on the intake, just like the E303, but 231 exhaust, 231 degrees on the exhaust. So more exhaust duration than the, the standard E303. And then the lobe separation is, is actually uh, also slightly wider, 113 degrees versus 110 for the E303. So what does all this mean? We've got a single pattern versus dual pattern. We've got a little bit more exhaust duration on the summit cam, a little bit wider LSA. So what does all this equate to? So we can take a look at that. Here's what happened when we ran the summit cam. You can see we did indeed pick up power. So the peak power jumped up to 412 horsepower. And if you compare that to the factory five liter cam, that was a gain of 44 horsepower. So 44 horsepower gain is definitely something that guys would be interested in. And you know, if you're gonna do a cam swap, you want it to be worthwhile. So those kinds of gains are definitely beneficial. And this cam chef worked out very well. As I said, most of the gains from the summit cam came at the top of the RPM range, so above 53 or 5400 RPM. Um, and if you continue to rev this thing out, we, we went to 6400 or so. So if you're running to 6500 or something, it, um, this, this camshaft would work out. You can see that it traded power uh, back and forth a little bit between the normal E303. It was always as, kind of as good or better than the E303 through most of the curve. There did look to be a slight drop in power from the Summit cam compared to the um, normal E303, the single pattern camshaft down low below 3000 RPM. It was not dramatic. We see a difference here of 309. Uh, versus 318, so about nine nine foot pounds down low. So there's there is some down there. So that, that's interesting. And then we see we see the little change in sine waves between the cams as they go back and forth. But obviously the Summit cam uh, definitely better out on the top. So this was an interesting comparison. It shows what happens when modern cam timing is applied to you know <laughs> obviously one of our OG kind of classic favorites for the five liter application. So now I'm looking forward to testing some even bigger cams from the guys at Summit because they have versions of, uh, in addition to this E303, they also have versions of the B303 and the and the F303. So those will be interesting. We'll do lots of testing on the five liter stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway from this comparison of the five liter Ford cam 
the Ford Racing E303, and then the Summit E303 Plus version. Well, we learned the following thing. Obviously, camshaft technology has marched on, and camshafts have gotten better. But more importantly, I think, for this comparison, and I've been telling you this on this channel for a long time, if I'm given the choice between a single pattern cam and a dual pattern cam where the intake duration stays the same, I tend to pick the dual pattern cam. They just usually make more power, and we saw that here. We see that in the LS family and the other engine families, but on this 5-liter Ford, the Summit version, this E303 Plus, made more power on the top, 412 versus 400 horsepower, so not an insignificant mount. Definitely you'd want to choose if you're picking those two camshafts. You want to pick the one that makes more power. Now, please note in the, in the dyno graph, there was a slight drop in power down low, so if that's more important to you, maybe go with the single pattern cam. What I'm really excited about, I don't like doing this comparison of the two E303 versions of these cams, but Summit Racing also has versions for the B303 and the larger F303. So I'm very excited about testing those camshafts on this combination and then also running basically all of these cams on a fuel injected 5 liter. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.